Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we are going to go on a little bit of a nursery tour to show you just all sorts of great things that are happening here at the nursery and I am going to tell you some great gardening tips that you can be doing in your garden right now. Remember we are North Carolina, a zone 7b. It is the beginning of February but for us because we're not covered you know in snow it is quite chilly but it's not you know, you can still work out in the garden. It's a lot of fun to get out there. There are some great tips that you can do. So stay tuned. I'm going to tell you all some wonderful chores that you can be out in your garden doing right now that will prepare you to have a beautiful spring and summer and fall. But before we do that, let's do a little update on all of these gorgeous prudent winters annuals that we are growing. Now, you will notice that we are standing here with a trailer and we have a couple of hanging baskets. We have spent today, Christine and I and my mom have spent the day putting um, some hanging baskets together. So this is what a brand new assembled hanging basket looks like that you can get here at Creekside Nursery. This particular one is Mini Vista Indigo. This was new last year and we didn't put it in a hanging basket. We had them in gallons and quarts. They were stunning. If you can get a mini Vista Indigo, you really need to get it. Um, it had the, the flower colors are purple and then the, as they mature, they change to different shades of purple and blue. It's gorgeous. The whole mini Vista series is great because they, they are very abundant in flowers like your regular Vistas, but they're not as a vigorous spreader. So they are much more controlled and compact. So they do great in containers and in landscapes where you want them to stay contained. So this should make an absolutely stunning hanging basket. You will notice that we have three plugs in here. We do three plugs in the 10 inch basket and come you know, end of March, first of April, this will be beautiful. It will be full and it will be hanging over. So we have mini Vista Indigo here. There is no more room in the greenhouse, so we were going to take the rest of these up to the production greenhouses. So, are you ready to see an update on these beautiful annuals? It's amazing. Come on in. So, it is nice and toasty in here. Come on in. Look. So this is the Mini Vista White. So we talked about the Mini Vista Indigo. This is Mini Vista White. But look at that beautiful plant. It's just stunning. Nice and full, beautiful dark green. It is a gorgeous plant. So we can just go through. I'm going to show you some. We won't go through each and every plant because we would be here forever. But oh, look. Bubble gum. I think I can hear everybody, all the bubblegum lovers out there ooing and aahing and saying, get in my garden now. So that is our first bubblegum. That's the mini Vista bubblegum. And look at this. Here is snowdrift. So maybe you're new to Proven Winters petunias and you don't know about them. So let me tell you a little bit about Proven Winters calls their petunias supertunias. That's their trademark name for their petunias. The most vigorous series, what we're talking about is the Vista series. And there's five colors in that series. This is Snowdrift, which is just that pure white. It was brand new last year. The classic standard is that bubblegum. Vistas do amazingly well in very large containers and the landscape. They will just go and go and go and give you gorgeous color. So it's very exciting even for us to come in here and go, oh, there's a bloom. So we can come on down here because I know there are some more um, blooms that I want to show you. For example, here we have, this is holy cow, super bells, holy cow. Super tunias are petunias. Super bells are calibracoa, also known as million bells. Very similar in shape, habit, everything as a petunia. Typically their blooms are smaller. They do great in containers, pots, hanging baskets, not very well in the ground, in the landscape, because they don't like wet feet. So we really recommend you not putting them in the ground. Of course, there are a few exceptions, but for the majority of us, you don't want to put these in the ground. So you have that, and then look, look at Dreamsicle. This is a gorgeous orange, and this makes a stunning container. 
I love Dreamsicle in a container. Again, they get nice and full and they'll drape over. They're stunning. They're gorgeous. Let's see if we have some more blooms. Um, but everybody you can see is really filling in quite nicely. So here we have the Osteos. This is the Double Moon Glow. Last year was our first year growing these and we found because the Osteos tend to like a little bit of a cooler environment, like they flower in cooler weather and they were stunning. I mean, they like you, you can see that these have a lot more blooms than say like the petunias do. So it will not be long before this whole section is in bloom. Um, I'm trying to see what else we've got blooming. Of course, lemon coral, it is coming nicely. This is a great accent plant, a great ground cover. You cannot go wrong with the lemon coral. It is just a magnificent plant. You'll notice that you'll hear some fans going. We use the fans for cross ventilation because you want the air to keep moving in here. You don't want it to be stagnant. You want to spread the heat around, all sorts of good things like that. So that is what is going on right now. I know a lot of people have asked, you know, when can we get these annuals? Well, we need the outside weather to kind of catch up with the inside weather. Excuse me. We need the, to catch up with, there's too much of a difference right now. So even though like your super bells and your super tunias are more cold tolerant, if you were to put them out there, they're going to get zapped. So you've got to be a little patient with all of that that's going on. Now you will see we've got hanging baskets. There is um, a little bit of a bloom. This is tropical sunrise. So look how sweet that is. This is one of our most popular hanging baskets because tropical sunrise is a gorgeous, like a coral color with yellow accents. It's a wonderful plant. Um, we do have for the first time ever these gorgeous succulents that we got from Pleasant View. So these are not a proven winter plant. Remember that Pleasant View is the one of the two nurseries that grows proven winter annuals. And of course they do non-branded material too. They have a succulent kit that we could get and they, <laughs> they're fantastic. They love this greenhouse. They are growing. There are some that are gonna be perennials for us, but then there are some that you will have to keep indoors during the winter because they just can't come, you know, make it through those cold temperatures outside. Because like, you know, this morning we woke up and it was 22. They would zap those. So as you can see, I mean, everything is growing. We're getting there. Even the lantana, I mean, the lantana is growing. You've got a little bud right there. So it is not going to be long before these guys are going to be nice and full. It is our goal and intent with this early crop to kind of use that for our mail orders when we do the online ordering that these will go out to those warm climates. So you sweet folks in California, Florida, Texas, where you are going to be about four weeks ahead of us, even here in North Carolina that as long as the weather allows, we'll be able to ship these out to you and you can get started gardening right away before it gets really too hot. Speaking of the website, it is coming along quite nicely. I know that y'all are ready for that thing to be up. I am ready for that thing to be up, but guess who's putting the website together? Yes. So Jerry's building the greenhouse. I'm working on the website and we are, we're getting there. So just trust me. I will let you know as soon as it is up and ready. Now, Diamond Snow, we've talked about this before, is part of that Euphorbia, the Diamond Series with Proven Winners. This is Diamond Snow. Diamond Snow is the most compact, intense white color. It's going to be this, the plant will be the same size as Diamond Frost, which is nice and airy. Diamond Frost will kind of intermingle with the other plants in your container and that nice airy look. Diamond Snow is a really tight, compact, big pop of white. This is a wonderful plant. In fact, I'm going to do my hanging baskets across the front of my house straight in diamond snow. So I have big hanging baskets. So I'll put three diamond snows in there. So you'll just see these massive containers of white. I have done petunias before, but our front porch is a little weird in that it doesn't get sun 
until the very end of the day and it's very intense sun and I have found that the euphorbia does really well because it can do sun part sun and it's more drought tolerant so that's what I'm going to do now do we want to go to the other greenhouse that greenhouse next door Jerry's looking at me yeah, so let's not okay so let's talk about my close this door because you know it is like I don't know it's really cold out here now it is February what can you be doing in your garden right now to prepare for a great season to come okay now this is going to depend on where you are but if you are in like I said we're in zone 7b if you're in a zone 7 or higher meaning warmer then you can definitely be doing these things now if you're in a zone five and you're covered in snow obviously you're probably not going to be doing these right now probably about a month six weeks from now you can start doing these things one if you have our southerners if you have crepe myrtles and you need to trim them up give them a little bit of shape great time to do it right now if you don't know how to trim your crepe myrtles i want you to check out this video we're going to link it right up here at the top and it'll also be in the description i show you exactly how to trim your crepe myrtle just say no to crepe murder. Crepe murder is where you just take the tops off and you give it a flat top. Please do not do that. If you're doing that, please stop. <laughs> so we don't do that. Okay, so trim your crepe myrtle, shape it up, get rid of any kind of old dead limbs, thin out that canopy. Super easy to do, but it will really help your crepe myrtle flourish. So do that. Now is a great time to trim back your butterfly bushes. Butterfly bushes, remember, bloom on new growth. So you want to trim them back because you trim them back, that encourages new growth. And if they bloom on new growth, then that means you're going to have extra blooms this year. So maybe you haven't trimmed your, your butterfly bush in a long time and you've noticed that your blooms are not there as much. That's because you need to prune it. Every year, late winter, before the spring starts, you need to trim it. How do you trim your butterfly bush? Well, I'm so glad you asked because we did a video on that last year. Again, check out the video that we have above or go down to the description and we have the link there. It is really, really easy and you will be just amazed at how many flowers you get this coming summer. Also, it is time to trim your hydrangeas. Not all hydrangeas need to be pruned right now though. Especially you want to prune your panicle hydrangeas. Those again are the, very similar to butterfly bushes in that they bloom on new growth. Limelights are a great example. So panicles are the ones that have the cone-shaped blooms on them. If you know the name of your hydrangea, but you don't know if it's a panicle, just Google it. Professor Google, I tell you, is a very smart little invention. So just throw the name in there and you can find it and it will tell you what kind it is. So panicles must be pruned every year. You're going to trim it back by about one third. Again, check out the video. I show you exactly how to do it. You will again be amazed at how much blooms you get this coming season. So make sure you do that. Your bulbs. If you haven't planted, let's say you've had your tulip bulbs in your refrigerator for your 10 weeks. If you're a southerner like I am and you have to have a false winter for your tulips, if your 10 weeks are up, then in the next couple of weeks, you can go ahead and get your tulips in the ground. That's in the ground, in the pot. We were having a little technical difficulty there. Jerry's making faces at me, so we're just going to go with it. Um, so now is a great time. Go ahead and get them planted, get them potted up because it's still cool. This will pretend like they're coming out of their winter and they will come and bloom when it is the appropriate time. If you still have some bulbs that you were supposed to stick in the ground, say like your jonquils, your daffodils, and you hadn't done it yet, just go throw them in the ground. It's fine. You know what? Just go with it. If you have the bulbs already, get them in the ground. Now is a great time to do it. Um, so there is a lot of things that you can be doing out in the garden. Of course, you want to be weeding. I know there's some areas in our garden that need a new fresh layer of mulch, especially with our perennial beds. I like to mulch it if it needs mulch before the perennials come back because it just makes it so much easier to apply that mulch when they're dormant as opposed to when they're coming up and they're new and all of that. So those are some basic things. We will be coming back to these lists all the time and showing you things. 
Now we're going to go up to the new greenhouse. We're going to bring these baskets up, get those up there. But I want to show you some of those new developments that Jerry has gotten, those little fine-tuned moments on the greenhouse so that they will be ready for plants here in just the next couple of days. So let's go up there. Okay, we are here in the new production greenhouse. You may not see some things that are immediately different. Perhaps, though, you will see that we have four exhaust fans here in the greenhouse because they are just, um, again, just like at the other greenhouse, they circulate the air. Now, we're going to flip around. We've talked about this before it was up, but now it really is up. This is the heater. It is a gas heater. It works beautifully. The gas company came Monday or Tuesday and hooked it up, and Jerry called me that afternoon and said, like, come up here. And it was incredibly warm. It filled this greenhouse with hot air just like that. So it is up. It is functional. Um, he has run electrical wire everywhere because, of course, we're going to have lights in here. Not grow lights, but just lighting so that we can move around or work in here when it's dark. So that is up. You will see that he today got the, on the side purlins. These are the drippers, of course, for hanging baskets. So those will go, hanging baskets will go up there. We have also ordered some extenders, which mean they're like the big hooks, like the big S hook that you use for maybe your bird feeders or whatever. So those will hang down so we can have like hanging basket here, hanging basket here, and then we'll have one here in the middle that will hang lower. So it's that tiered window pane effect of hanging baskets. So we can double those. Um, he will probably go ahead at some point and run hanging baskets across this, um, the roof trusses, just like we do in the other greenhouse. Um, but th those are up. This lovely thing right here is the thermostat. So this is the thermostat that controls the heater. We have it set. There's a dial so you can set, like right now it's set for 54, I think. So once it hits 54, the heat kicks on. It'll run for a little bit and then it cuts itself off. So that's fantastic. You can set it for whatever heat level you want. Um, let's see what else we did. Um, he did finish the gravel. So before, last time we were in here, it was a little rough. We had some unevenness and where some water was holding. He's come in here with the bobcat, added some gravel, smoothed it out. This year, we are going to leave it as gravel. If we decide next year we want to add some landscape fabric on the floor, we will. You can always easily do that. That's not that big of a deal. But that's down. Um, and you can see we got a brand new shipment of annuals today. These came from Pleasant View because the other one that came was Four Star. So that's what was in those baskets were from Four Star. So they're in here. There's tons of great stuff. We can go through that later. But they're hanging out here because, as you saw, there is no room for them in those greenhouses down at the nursery. So we will be spending the next foreseeable future just potting up like crazy, both hanging baskets and the four-inch material. Um, so that's just kind of what's been going on here. It's just the fine-tuning, those last little minute things making it ready, but we will go ahead once these annuals get potted up, they will come in here because there's nowhere else for them to go. And this is their final new home. So that's what will happen. I think that's about it. Is there anything else? Jerry's shaking his head no. Um, of course, we'll keep you updated. We're, we are gonna do, I know we're gonna film tomorrow with us ha doing hanging baskets so you can see that whole process, how we do it, what is involved, and we can go into a lot more detail about the annuals in general. But as always, Thank you for gardening with Creekside. If you have not subscribed to the channel and you have been here for a while, please hit that button. We would love to have you officially part of the Gardening with Creekside family. And if you are a subscriber, but you don't have, like you're not notified, hit the little bell and then you will get notified whenever we do put out new videos. But we appreciate you. Thank you so much for all your kind words and encouragement and support. We really appreciate it. So from our family to you, happy gardening. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.